Lesson 17, The Voyagers While walking through the streets of St. Paul in 1851, traveler Frank Blackwell Mayer observed a race of people who were distinct in their manner, appearance, and attitude from the Americans. He described them as having the vivacity, merry jest, and laugh and expressive attitude and gesture of old France, while being generally of smaller size than the Americans and of light active figure. The people he observed were the French-Canadian voyagers and they, along with their descendants, populated much of St. Paul and Minnesota. They also played an active role in the Treaty of Traverse de Sioux in 1851. The presence of the voyager was unignorable for Mayer who noted that French could be heard spoken as much as English. Voyagers were traders in the Great Northwest Frontier long before the Dakota Treaties in 1851. They had come from France and Canada to trade for furs with the American Indians. But the land was vast and unsettled and so they ventured thousands of miles by canoe and by portage to collect furs in exchange for European goods. Their travels were long and dangerous and required the voyagers to live among the wilderness. Voyagers were generally short so they could fit their legs into the canoe and had a strong upper build from month after month of paddling. The voyagers were also known to be extremely courteous and with a refinement of bearing. They were often lively and could always be heard singing a tune. As described by Mayer, their tunes are very light, airy, and graceful, full of beautiful expressions suited to their purpose and the accompaniments of the voyager as he paddles his canoes down rivers of the north and west. One voyager of particular interest to Frank Mayer during the treaty negotiations was Henry Belland. As noted by Mayer, Belland was the voyager of voyagers. Belland was the son of Canadian parents who lived in Montreal, but for many years roved the vast regions of Minnesota and beyond. In describing Belland, Mayer wrote, The energy which distinguishes the American pioneer was engrafted on the elegance of his French nature, and that roughness which generally accompanies the backwoodsmen of American birth was replaced by the ease, grace, and animation of the French gentleman. According to Mayer, Henry Belland was one of the few ideals he had met in actual life.